shit. Hey, Billy Bauman. All the What's up? All what? Uh, I'm messing uh, you up. I'm- <laughs> uh, uh, uh. All the kids want to know. All the Do kids they? want to know. Billy, hey, what's cool? Oh, we're just going right into it? Yeah, that's what we're doing. You know, the camera wasn't working, Mark, and I was preoccupied. Um, so uh, I don't have my xylophone. <laughs> Come on, do it for me. Bing, Go. bing, bing. Hey, that's cool with Billy. Bing. No, you, no, bing, you do the bing, thing. Bing, bing. Billy. Billy. There you go. Yeah. Okay. What's cool, Billy? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you got the links I sent you? I do. Let me just go over to my web browser here. And here is your first cool. Okay, so first school, I got a new book. Art book. Oh. What? What are you owing? What what happened? What I, did I freeze? Hey Billy, what's cool? What's ping, ping, ping. I wasn't recording. <laughs> you weren't recording? Hey Billy, what's cool? Hey Mark. You know what's cool? What's you that? are. Thanks, buddy. Our, fr- our friendship. Our friendship's real cool. So you got a new book. Yeah, I got a new book. Okay, so long story short. Wait a minute. You need content. Short story long. There you that- go. Hold on. Wait a minute. After seven years, you just figured out the way to do this. <laughs> so I don't know if you do this, Mark Bricky. Yeah. But um, my name, my last name is Common, but not super common. Yeah. Right. So every once in a while, I'm like, oh, you know, who's 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 famous that has a, the same last name as me? And why does that matter? It doesn't. Just just interested. Just curious. Do you have so little going on in your life that this is a hobby of yours? No, it just pops into my head every once in a while. It's like last week when I I Googled uh, accident, uh, taffy puller accident. It's just one of these things that pops into my head. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah, fair enough. And so, uh, a couple famous people now keep in mind, Bauman has to have two ends on it to be the same. So this okay. isn't officially your name. Officially. Yeah. Got it. So there's a, there's a, there's a soccer goalie in Germany. That's pretty, pretty famous Yeah. in the first division. And then we've got Gustav Bauman, which this is kind of like Gus from hammer time. And Bauman, if if you and Gus had a baby, this is yeah. this is his book, his baby book, his little baby book. Of- so years ago, I kind of looked this guy up and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And and I found out that he spent some time in Nashville, um, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, not Tennessee. I'm sorry. Nashville, Indiana, which is a, this little like artist community. I always wonder about people that have to tell people, oh, has this your first time eating at a restaurant? Yeah, we're here on vacation. Where are you from? We're from London. Oh, Lo- London, Ontario. Yeah, London, Ontario. <laughs> where, where are you from? We're from Paris. Oh, my God. But Paris, Kentucky. Yeah. So this place has got a great candy shop, but this is not what we're here to talk about. They've got a whole back wall with different, like 50 different kinds of black licorice from all over the world, which is really cool. I fucking hate licorice. Okay. Um, you're just full of hate. I'm full of love, Mark. So several years ago, I went on like art.com or allposters.com and I found a a Gustav Bauman print and I bought it and it's been hanging in our home ever since. That's so So cool. I really like Gustav Baldwin's earlier works. (laughs) Oh, you mean when he was in Nashville, Indiana? But uh, yeah, so this is a part of a little bit of his later work. This is when he was in uh, this book is chronicling the prints from when he was spending time in the Southwest um, and doing these woodblock prints. Um, so I bought this book, yeah. pretty affordable, cool book, not a big book. Um, but the print that we have in our house is like one of the images in this book. And so if you go to his uh, Wikipedia page, it's pretty interesting. Um, Let me just go. I got, I got that browser open. Oh, oh that's okay. Didn't want oh. anybody to see that. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <Design> <laughs> <pickle>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Search for articles. 
So he's from Germany, but he spent some time, I believe, in Chicago. Um, uh, I thought I thought he did. Uh, yeah, Art Institute of Chicago. Um, uh, oh. So these are woodblock prints. They're really they're really cool. Um, uh, yeah, so this was like the later part of his career when he spent time in Santa Fe. Um, it's a cool book. It's a nice book. Um, the, the all of his images, almost all of his images, are of nature. Yeah, buildings and stuff like that. And they're just sort of uh, they're very pretty. And these they're are wood like, blocks, right? Yeah, wood block. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so, so he carved all these things. Uh, there's almost a uh, early um, Ivan Earl kind of aspect to some of his his bushes and stuff. I could see Ivan Earl being influenced by this guy. Yeah, not quite so um, fantasiful. You know what I mean? Like it's a little yes. bit more real, but yeah. Yeah, obviously because of the woodblock, you can't put every detail in there. So he was forced to make them somewhat stylized. Yeah, and then also the the woodblock naturally puts a, a sort of a texture on things because yeah. of the the, the relief. Sort of, um, yeah, but sort of also like the the, the the shittiness of the printing technique of a woodblock. You know, Billy, you you, know I mean? you made a mistake the first time that we did this live over on YouTube. You wore your fez, and now. Yeah. You haven't worn it weeks in oh. a row, and people just get disappointed. So, listen, Jeremy, I got something better than Fez. Hold on. Jeremy Housen writes in: No Fez means zero cools. Well, I mean, Billy's never been cool; it hasn't stopped him though. And then Ryan Sanders says, "I can't wait to hear the overdubs." Oh, I get what you're saying. When we actually, I add in the xylophone later. Oh, Rasta Billy tonight. This is. Wait, I got my headphones in. Oh, cool! What's this up, like, Rasta Billy, the Rainbow Wizard? Yeah, this was Anne's wizard, Rainbow Wizard hat. Yeah, that's from pretty the same costume set. That's pretty cool, bud. Yeah, and Charlie was a uh, magic wand. She was a rainbow kitty. That was her idea. She wanted to be a rainbow kitty. Tony Mendez, don't even get me started about all the Star Wars land stuff that's leaked. If I start talking about that, we'll never get onto another topic. Okay, Billy. Yeah, so someone even saw, fucking sent that to me today. How many cools are we giving Gustave Bauman's Southwest book? Oh, let's do three. Bing, bing, bing. Awesome. Great job, Mark. Thanks, buddy. Thank you for, thank you for pinch hitting. Now, why did you pick this as something that you thought was cool? Gustav? No, this next one that we have up here. BronyCon, August 1 through 4. <laughs> Is this something that you're going to? It looks like an RC to me, but whatever. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, $150 for your four day gold pass. You're going to meet all your favorite fellow Brones. Awesome. I mean, that's look at the speaker list. Britt McCliff wow. is there. Such high. I don't understand what these. I'm Britt McCliff. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Is it like a voice actor or something? Hello, I'm Britt McClip. Okay, tell me about Dennis's workshop because it's a killer website. Dennis uh, Bodart. Uh -huh. He's a Belgian comic book artist. Da. He actually he actually knows, he's friends with uh, um, the other Belgian post artist that we know. What's his name? Come on, help me. Come on. Arno Kiss. No. Laurent Derue. Ah, Laurent Derue. Yeah, right? So this guy's work, I just fell in love with it. It has so much life and energy and character. And I was thinking, what do you think about this, Mark? This is a big question for you. Okay, do you think ahead. that people that work analog just have more life in their work? Uh, even, though, even though digital can replicate so much of analog work these days there's just something by about seeing a pencil on paper or ink you know what i mean especially yeah. with ink there's no taking it back um if you go to his website the um, like if you look at some of his sketches and stuff the scans that he has in are huge like this the scans that he has are really big where do you um, want me to go? Work, work me through this website here. It's a very confusing. I know it's kind of old school website. He does, I don't think he has an Instagram. Um, I don't know. Go to. Uh, uh, we should start an Instagram for him and get all uh, of his followers. Yeah, go to sketch. 
uh, well, uh, tributes, various comics, Chasely Blaze, sketches and originals. That's where we'll go. Yeah, dude, let's do sketches and originals. Let's see. Sketches and originals. All right, we're looking at Dennis's workshop. Sketches and original sketches, storyboards, and original strips done for short story. Chasley Blaze. All right, this is catching my eye right here. I agree with you. When you do stuff by hand, the the problem with digital is even when you're using the digital tools, mm -hmm. there's still a delay. And, you know, you got to go select your brush and then you got to select your widen. like there's a lot of pre setup. But if you're just literally doing it by hand, you probably have everything laid out on your art table and you just go and you grab a brush and you dip it in water and then it hits the surface. And then it's maybe a little bit too loose than what you want. So you work with it. There's just a natural there's a natural flow to working by hand that it's always going to have a little bit more life. Because after all, all the Adobe stuff was just created to mimic what artists do by hand. Yeah, yeah. But even with the um, the digital stuff, even if it's trying to replicate an inked line or a roughed ink line or something like that, there's there's a randomness to actual analog brush on paper yeah. that is there's a there's such a randomness to it that can't be quite replicated in, in digital at least not yet hello chastity blaze where are we going i'm never going anywhere with you here comes a robot beep boo bop this is beautiful yeah i was really um you know i think a lot of my work um is stiff right mm -hmm. so when i see someone who's who has such life and energy in their work. Um, I'm really drawn to it. Okay. So you like Dennis's workshop. How do you, how do you keep finding these sort of old, but not quite famous artists? Like what's the, the vibe on how you fall into all this stuff? Pinterest. I spend a lot of time at Pinterest. It's quite a tool for the creative. The Pinterest is, I want to see his ink strips. I like to see the ink. I like to see when people, I'm like this, the sketchiness is cool. But I like to see yeah. when they put their polish on it. How polished can we go? All right. This looks like an interesting see, cell right here. This turn. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. But there's still looseness to it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's yeah. precision, but with loose. It's cool. It, I, You typically like stuff that someone is reminiscent on what you do, and I can see a little bit of you in this. Like this this guy right here driving the car, um, that looks like a kind of like a Billy Ballman character. Yeah. I, but I wish I was that loose. Yeah. I, well, uh, you will be once you go to BronyCon. What do you What do you need me to get you here? You want to go <laughs> visit for a day, or you want that? Give um, me some poppers to loosen up my. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Britt McClip. All right, and what else? We got one. We got another cool. I'm gonna give him three stars as well. Oh, Bing, Bing, Bing! Hit that last one a little bit flat. That's eh, okay. Now this next one, I'm very curious about. Let me YouTube hear. video. So this is in honor of Peter, uh, Peter uh, um, uh, Torque, right? Is that his name? Shit, I lost. Fucking the guy, the beat, the monkey who just died last week. Who are you? Hello. Yes, the monkey who died last week. Yeah, you, you don't. You know about the monkeys? Yeah, I know about the monkeys. Oh, okay. This know. is a wild video clip that you pulled here. This is not just a whole video clip. This is uh, the whole show so in 1969 um the monkeys this was a special that was on like nbc or abc i can't remember the two and it's just this really psychedelic it's weird, bizarre it, it is bizarre it has the, the two people in the beginning here are, are julie driscoll and brian auger um and uh obviously then the monkeys are in it and then jerry lee lewis little richard Fats Domino are in it later. Some other, other people are in it when they had this big freak out. It's basically, they're making fun of themselves. They're right in the beginning. They become a manufactured product, a manufactured band. Yeah. And then they do these like manufactured songs each. And then they're like, this is bullshit. Let's break out of this. And then they just kind of have a right at the, if you skip to the end, they just have a massive freak out. And it's kind of, I highly recommend watching the whole thing. Um, it's, it's, fantastically weird totally 1960 the fact that it was on like regular television in 1969 
it's it's really far out there did you just notice with the way that they were moving the camera that it was hard to tell that they were on a forklift because the camera was moving opposite of the forklift it kind of gave this weird dimensional (laughs) shift there okay so this era of the 60s when when i'm a child in the 70s a lot of this stuff had sort of found its way over to to tv you know like on the, the independent channels the uhf channels and so I just would stumble into this sort of psychedelic world without any yeah. explanation. So you would just like kind of turn on the TV Sunday afternoon opposite of sports programming and you wouldn't know what you'd walked into. You would just see these characters and, and this weird <laughs> sure. world and you just look at it and try to make sense of it. So whenever I see this part of pop culture, it feels very familiar to me because i just remember like the sets of mm-hmm. soul train and and just all you know all this interesting stuff that wasn't designed for my age but it was just still kind of around making waves it's also wacky and weird you just wonder was everyone on drugs <laughs> i think everyone was on drugs yes but i mean it, 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 in the late 70s mark the, i'm sure everything was being reruns i mean you were yeah the monkeys were always being reruns so you're probably a, recognize it from that but you know this is from my civilized age psychedelic era yeah i mean we this is kind of pre-youtube so we would pass around found things and weird things like the monkeys 33 and the third revolutions per monkey and um and and even you know much much more more obscure things you know oh did you see this did you see this this look, oh, look at this rare footage of Pink Floyd from 1967. Uh, you know, like that. It, it, it was our subculture. So it was, you know, this is the kind of stuff that uh, we really dug. Yeah. It, yeah. It's also interesting that before YouTube, you had to actually find somebody who went to an antique store or a yard sale picked up a vhs copy of this or found it exactly your your older brother recorded it somehow and passed it over to a friend like it was so hard to kind of stumble across this but when i was skimming through this earlier i'm like there's so many moments where you could pause this illustrate out some of these psychedelic characters and everybody be like i love your art style like it's so (laughs) far away from what's you know contemporary and what we see today and anything that would air on tv today and when you watch this stuff it's amazing how much quicker things are edited after the music video i i really think of the mtv era it made things go faster because if your video didn't have lots of clips or like a side story to it it would just be kind of boring and i think that if you look at the evolution of the music video and you look at entertainment or just tv things used to not as have as many cuts in it and i think that the video being set to music and trying to tell a lot of story in three and a half minutes. I think it made everything else seem slow. So the rest of the world had to try to keep up with it. But I also think that just technology enabled it, right? When, when sure. you had a, when you had a splice film, you're taking your time. Uh, yeah. For a television special that you had a weekend to get out or something, you know, yeah, I just think it's hard for people to understand how big of a deal MTV was when it came on the scene and how it literally revolutionized not only TV, but yeah. marketing to young people and the way that music was consumed. And I just feel like if you look at things after that moment, it's different. Yeah. It's a combination of technology, but I think once you get that short attention span, you know, everything else just feels so long and boring when you're looking at one mm. shot for longer than five or ten seconds. It reminds me of this podcast. <laughs> Mark, I forgot to take my pill to get on. But take taking drugs on the on YouTube. Are you really doing that on YouTube, dude? What did you just take? A barbiturate? A goofball? Huh? A you're taking, popper. You taking goofballs? <laughs> you get I get inspired. High? I get inspired by this video. You getting high, uh, man? But I definitely highly recommend watching this whole thing because it gets weird. There's some there's some definite low moments in it, but Whoops. there's some <laughs> oh design cucumber. Uh yeah, it's it gets freaky. I mean, there's a section where Brian Auger is playing his organ. Yeah, they pan out, and he's standing on top of Jerry Lee Lewis's piano, and then they pan out, and Jerry Lee Lewis is standing on top of 
of Little Richard's piano. And then they pan out. And then at the very bottom is Fats Domino with this giant piano. And they're all playing at the same time. <laughs> Fucking this? amazing. Hold on, look at this world that they built for them. Yeah, this is the freak out at the end. It's like post-apocalyptic. And they're all just like, they just have a major freak out. Post-apocalyptic, so, more like a yard sale. All right, there's yeah, Fats Domino. Yeah, call it whatever you want. Yeah. So it's, I think there's like a giant explosion or something. Well, this is a pretty wacky pick. How many cools are we giving this, Billy? Four. Four cools for these guys. Come on. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, and that was another exciting episode of Hey, That's Cool with Bing, bing, bing. Billy. Billy, real quick, over from our live chat, I'm going to allow one person to ask you a question. Hello? Yeah, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> I'm waiting for one person. Oh, oh. To ask they you a question. Asked. Yes, one person over on our this live chat. This could be chat. like an Ask Dr. Drew. Yeah, it's well, it's Ask Billy. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. It could be like an intimate, personal, you need advice kind of question. Absolutely. And yeah. because you have your wizard hat on and because you know all, I'm relying on someone over in the live chat to just ask Billy a question. They're winding up. They nominated Tony Tran. He is going to be the nominate nomination from the, the Council nominate. of the Circle like of Trust. <laughs> Tony Tran, a.k.a. Cat Tears, lives in Australia, possibly could be homeless. He's watching us at the library. He spends a lot of time at the library. He's part of our Circle of Trust training camp, and he's always walking around, and he's on his way to work. And then one day I said, how sad are we all going to feel when we realize that Tony's homeless? And he's Aww. just always walking around because he's got no place Wait, to go. Wait, is he one of those guys that are wearing the mask on the monkey bars in the training videos? Okay, that I here we see? go. Your question's coming in. Are you ready? Yeah. Tony Tran says, if you can be back into time, Billy. Apparently English is not his first language. <laughs> the question is, if you can be back into time, your answer, please. <laughs> That's not a question. He's drunk. It must be 3 a.m. there or something. Billy, if you can back me. <laughs> if you can be back into time. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> if I can be back into time. He really was trying to write if you can go back into time. But I think you should answer if you can be back into time. Uh, if you could go back into time, Billy. If yeah. you could turn back time. Yeah, I'd like to live my life over. Yeah, definitely no child. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. But to know now what I didn't know then and to do it over. What would you do if you could go back into time? Any moment in recorded history, where would you go? Well, where would I? Oh, oh, in recorded history, where would I go? Yeah. Well, okay, let's get out of the way the kill Hitler part because that's what everyone says. Uh, so, okay, we're gonna kill Hitler, but if okay, let's say that's off the table. Let's go. I mean, honestly, we live in the best time. Technology. This is the best time. We're the most least. We're the least violent we've ever been as a as a as a race. Billy, have a curveball for There's you. the least amount of poverty there is right now. Yeah. Ever. There's also the, the least amount of dragons that there ever were. <laughs> right. When you want to go back to castle times. There's never was a dragon, but yeah. Billy. No. Why would I want to go to castle times? I don't That's know. It's horrible. I don't know. Horrible. I don't. I mean, we have air conditioning. Whenever I watch Westerns, I'm like, God, everybody must smell like asshole hair. Oh, my God. I think about it all the time. Or like when people like make love, make love, whenever they have the sex, unlike Game of Thrones, I'm like, oh, my God, that just probably just stinks. It's disgusting. Billy, I have another question for you from our live chat. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Benjamin Netanyahu being indicted? You know, I read that. I just read the headline. But I haven't read the the details, um, so I can't fully comment on it. 
but I am curious. I am going to probably watch a lot of YouTube videos about it tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to um, be watching the news this evening as well. I I saw it pop up, but I've been so busy that I hadn't had a chance to jump into it. I thought maybe you could brief the audience on such an important global. I matter. I haven't. I mean, I was I was putting together a presentation. I came home. I ate eight um, Girl Scout cookies, and then I got on the YouTube with you. What? <laughs> What Girl Scout cookies? This is an important question. The one with the peanut butter, whatever those are called, tagalongs, maybe tagalongs, dosi dos, the peanut butter. All right, here's Chocolate coming. Here's butter. coming your real question from Tony Tran. That was just a warm up. That was just a warm up. Here comes the real question. It's coming all the way in from Australia, Convict Island. What is the question going to be? What is the question going to be? I don't know how we can top the last one, but I mean okay. the last one was great. The Billy, last one was great. If you could be into, what would you be? <laughs> Wait, what? Hey, so, let's let's start a design pickle account right now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I need I need help. Maybe they could do all the. Covers. What's our lowest? What's the lowest monthly retainer that we can get them for? Yeah, well, I mean, if we all split it, it'd be a great deal. Submit the form below to request a design for seventy five dollars. Subscribe to Unlimited Graphic Design for three seventy a month. So it's seventy five one hit, but it's three seventy if we go all in. Yeah, let's go all in. I feel I feel I'm not sure if I should feel good or bad because okay, design people the people that are are these the I believe the designers I have are like in Vietnam and stuff. So the Philippines is what I believe. Philippines. So three seventy a month for a Filipino designer is probably. I don't know the exchange rate, but maybe that's not that bad. I don't know. So maybe it's a good thing? Well, they're probably only giving the designer like 20% of that or something. Yeah. Which is some bullshit. Eric Ottinger writes in, is there a reason why we are using the old Shop Talk logo and not the yeah. teardrop? And that is because... Mark blows. The reason is because the teardrop is on a probational period of some usage until it can prove its ownership. <laughs> we will be reviewing it at a later time. We will be looking at how it's worked in the real world. We'll kick the tires on it and then we will make a decision. All right. I got to get off of here and get back to doing the real show. Tony is, I don't know what his question is, but whoever nominated him to be the official question asker just, just really lost it. Okay. They just really, really lost it because the best question that I've heard in a long time is if you can be back into time. <laughs> Maybe he was typing on his phone. Oh, here it is. It oh. just came in. Billy mentioned he wanted to start his solo illustration career with his style. Billy, when is this going to happen? You remember when you were going to try to work really, really hard and you're going to try to launch like an illustration style and you're going to put your name next to it and you're going to make projects that you put an intense amount of time into and it didn't seem to happen. That's what he's asking about. I, I, I understand what he's saying. That uh, is happening right now. It's still happening. When does everybody get to see it? I don't know. I'm doing a Metallica poster in my in Billy Bauman style right now. Okay. Well, there you go. There's your answer. What's, you go, what's your date? What's your what's your date? I don't know. Okay. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out and watching Billy's Cools Live. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us and thank you, Tony, for writing the worst question and then two others. And then two others. Thank you to the two others. No, he wrote the two others. He wrote a question and then two others, but he, in his fairness, as he said, his dumpster Wi-Fi was making him shaky. So he's fighting rats while he's trying to type them out. So it's <laughs> not an easy life being homeless in Australia. All right, everybody, you can hear the rest of today's shop talk in the future, a time called next wednesday when this when show me comes and tony out. tran will be there that's right and then by then we'll all know about benjamin Netanyahu. people only said that because they thought i couldn't say the name but i watched the news i watched the news yeah not not bad mark i watched I, the I, news. I gotta take this hat off it's really hot not until we stop streaming oh god